Hi. Um, there was recently um, a little boy, I don't know how old he is, but he seemed very young. Sir Theus DRF, okay? He's very disrespectful. He's kind of a bigot. Um, he called me some nasty names because of my religion. I don't appreciate that. Um, I, uh, I respect his right to believe what he wants, but I disagree. Um, he thinks that there are no valid correlations between Jesus and any previous, um, you know, uh, pagan deities. I beg to differ. I have several sources here that will show that not only is the Bible riddled, riddled with pagan sources, but that Jesus himself shares characteristics with many previous savior deities that are uncanny and obviously lead to the conclusion that these ideas were, you know, transposed onto Jesus because they wanted people to understand him as a God-man. Um, this is what I believe, and it's what many contemporaries, including Joseph Campbell, who's like the big myth guy, right? Power of myth, hero of a thousand faces, all that stuff, right? Um, <laughs> will agree with me on this as well. So, um, I, I wanted to, you know, he made one video discussing Adonis, which is probably the weakest of um, the all, all the correlations that there are. The one that I, there are a, a few that I like to use. Hor uh, um, Mithra is one of them, um, and uh, Horus is another. Dionysus is another one that has some characteristics shown with Jesus. But well, let's stick with Horus, because there's a great article that everybody can access at religioustolerance.org that points out um, the, uh, the correlations between um, Jesus and Horus, and um, it, it's really kind of a good page. It even gets down to the nitty gritty. And, and you know, some of these things were even like in the movie Zeitgeist. And a lot of people say, oh, Zeitgeist has been debunked. But not really, because I've seen the debunking videos and they all take it from a, like an insider's religious perspective. So in other words, they're all Christian and they all take things um, for granted that, as fact that they shouldn't. And therefore, um, it, it's not really um, a, a you know, a comparable comparison to, to Zeitgeist, which is secular. Um, so, and I know that some people think, oh, they just have an agenda and it's biased too and stuff like that. Not really. Um, it's just that they don't see, they don't see things from the insider's religious, religious perspective like other people do. So, um, just to give you some ideas of things that are on this page, and this is just one source, I've got plenty of others, okay? Um, it compares side by side Horus and Jesus, right? Um, I'm just going to say, uh, just to show some things, okay? Um, Horus, um, some people know his mother's name as Isis, but Isis Mary was the actual name. Isis dash Mary, sometimes seen. Mary spelled M E R I. Um, Jesus of Nazareth, aka Mary. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus Nazareth's mother's name was, was Mary, a.k.a. Miriam, I should say. And so those names are quite similar, okay? Same with, um, you know, um, they both had foster fathers. Um, in Egyptian, um, the foster father of Horus was named Seb, which also can be translated as Joseph. And, of course, Jesus of Nazareth's foster father was Joseph. They were both of royal descent. Um... Some stipulate that Jesus was born in a cave, and of course, Horus was also born in a cave. Um, the annunciation of his birth um, by, by angels, were for both of them. Um, both births were, were heralded by stars. Um, let's see. Uh, obviously, the celebrated birth date of Jesus is December 25th, um, and of course, winter solstice being Horus's birthday. Um, birth announcement by angels. Um, birth witnesses were shepherds on both occasions. Um, later witnesses to, to, to birth, three solar deities instead of three wise men. Now some people would say that the three wise men were the three stars of um, Orion's belt, therefore making them solar deities. Um, of course, deities in Egyptian lived in the stars as well. They have a lot of stars. Um, let's see. Let's see, um, a man named Herod um, tried to have uh, Horus murdered, um, and Herod, of course, tried to have Jesus murdered. 
Um, let's see. Uh, what else is on here? They both had coming of age rituals at age 12. Um, they both had no data between the ages of 12 and 30. Um, they both were baptized, one in the, in the river Eridanus and the other in the river Jordan. Um, both were baptized at age 30. Baptized by, uh, Horus was baptized by Anup the Baptizer and um, Jesus by John the Baptist. Um, both baptizers were beheaded. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, the, the amount of correlations between the two is just astounding, right? Um, it's it's amazing, you know, some of the um, the ideas behind the two and stuff like that. And some will also suggest that some of these, um, you know, that that the characteristics of Horus actually came after Jesus. But there's nothing to suggest that. Actually, I've got an article here that I'm going to put in the sidebar that talks about um, syncretism and the holy man in late a uh, antique Egypt. It's written by um, David Frank Fredder, um, and it's uh, from Project Muse, which is, they put out a lot of scholarly journal articles and stuff like that. This is um, from the library at my college. Um, they, they, they only put out really good sources, so um, it, it kind of talks about the syncretism of paganism into Christianity and not the other way around. Okay, it's talking about early Egyptian Christians before the Roman Empire took it over, and some of these aspects that got included into biblical scripture and not the other way around. So it really does kind of show that Jesus took on aspects of Horus because of these early Egyptian sacretists that um, spread the philosophy, spread the idea that these two were the same pe person. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to post this article um, on the sidebar, and I hope it is to your enjoyment. It's a bit dry. There's no pictures, so I apologize for that.